But what would happen if the sun suddenly disappeared? An icy and perpetual night would fall with temperatures dropping to minus 70 degrees. The entire biosphere would collapse and to survive, we'd have to build underground bunkers powered by geothermal, fossil and nuclear energy. Let's make one thing clear. It's not going to happen. I mean, this thing just doesn't happen. The sun doesn't just disappear, but imagining this absurd scenario is actually a way to learn more about the sun itself and how essential it is to our lives. That's why we decided to make this video. So the first thing to say is that if the sun disappeared, we wouldn't notice it right away. What does that mean? Well, today with me is our astrophysicist and coordinator of the magazine geopoppo.it, Filippo Bonaventura. Filippo will help us dig a little deeper into the details. Over to you, Phil. The relationship between Earth and the sun is based on gravity. It's gravity that has kept our planet bound to its star in a stable orbit for four and a half billion years. If the sun were to suddenly disappear, the first thing Earth would lose is that gravitational pull. But the amazing thing is, we would only notice it 8 minutes and 20 seconds later. That's because gravity doesn't travel through space instantaneously. Einstein's relativity teaches us that it actually propagates at the speed of light, which is 300,000 kilometers per second. Now, Earth is about 150 million kilometers from the sun, and at the speed of light, that distance is covered in exactly 8 minutes and 20 seconds. This is the time it would take for the gravitational information that the sun is gone to reach us. Without the sun's gravity, you know, Earth would have no reason to stay in orbit anymore, just like a ball tied to a string that we're spinning around. With the breaking of the gravitational string, our planet would literally shoot off on a tangent and start traveling in a straight line, keeping the same speed we had before, that is 108,000 kilometers per hour. The moon would follow us because it would still feel Earth's gravity, but we wouldn't be able to see it anymore. In fact, the moon appears to shine because it reflects sunlight. So without the sun, we wouldn't even have the moon's glow. Goodbye, moon. To be precise, after the sun disappears, we would still see the moon for just over a second. The time it takes for light to travel from the moon to Earth, 1.3 seconds to be exact. And suddenly, the moon would vanish from the sky as well. Little by little, the planets of the solar system would also go dark, because they too reflect the sun's light. The farther they are from the sun, the longer it takes for them to disappear. Saturn, for example, which is the most distant planet visible to the naked eye, would leave us after about an hour and a half at most. Stars, on the other hand, emit their own light so they wouldn't disappear. A whole host of phenomena that have accompanied our planet practically forever depend on the sun, so much so that we take them for granted. The most obvious effect is that there would no longer be a cycle of day and night on Earth, but instead perpetual darkness all over the globe. The cycle of the seasons also depends on the sun. Without the sun, we would no longer have spring, summer, autumn, or winter. The energy coming from our star is also the driving force behind all weather phenomena. So goodbye to rain, goodbye to winds, clouds, and everything else. But the most devastating effect would be the drastic drop in temperatures all over the world. Solar energy keeps us, keeps us warm, of course, but not just directly. It also does so through the greenhouse effect produced by our atmosphere. Without the sun, the Earth would start to cool down, losing its internal heat to space. Within a week, the globe, the average temperature would drop to zero degrees Celsius, and the mercury would settle at around minus 73 degrees Celsius within a year. Life would end, but not all of it. A world without the sun would have another major problem, this time a biological one. Yes, because all life depends, directly or indirectly, on the energy the sun sends us. You know photosynthesis, right? That process where plants use sunlight to produce sugars and keep themselves alive. So, without sunlight, photosynthesis would stop instantly and plants wouldn't survive. 
we'd have to say goodbye to all terrestrial vegetation within a few weeks. And along with the plants, the oxygen they produce through photosynthesis would also disappear. Oxygen wouldn't be a problem right away. There's enough of it in the air to let us breathe for a very long time. The real problem is that without vegetation, the entire food chain would collapse. What would herbivores eat, after all? And once they're extinct, what will the carnivores eat? Then there are the scavengers, meaning organisms that feed on dead organisms like vultures, for example. They would have food for a while, but sooner or later, even their food would run out. But be careful, not all life on Earth would necessarily be doomed to extinction. In fact, there are organisms that don't depend on sunlight, and it won't surprise you to learn that they live in the depths of the ocean floor. Down there, Hydrothermal vents provide energy directly from beneath the Earth and an abundance of chemical elements. These two factors have allowed the development of microorganisms that don't need photosynthesis, but instead live thanks to chemosynthesis, that is, they turn heat and chemicals into energy. For example, there are the Endeavour hydrothermal vents, 2,200 meters deep off the west coast of Canada. Here, you'll find organisms that have no need for sunlight at all. Extreme ecosystems like this would be the only ones likely to remain unaffected by the disappearance of the sun. At this point, the question is, how could we survive? Without solar energy, humanity's survival would be extremely difficult, if not impossible. But if we wanted to speculate, well, we could imagine that humanity would be confined to those areas of the world where it's possible to tap into that other source of energy we have, the one that comes from inside the Earth, geothermal energy. There would be a rush to those geothermal locations, like Iceland, for example, where the Earth's heat could somehow offset the cold and provide a source of energy. Small human communities could, at least in principle, survive by quickly building, I'd say, self-sufficient underground shelters, probably powered by what's left of fossil fuels, geothermal energy, and nuclear energy. With such low outside temperatures, however, extracting hydrocarbons and minerals would still be very, very difficult. From a logistical standpoint, it would be extremely complicated, just like working in Antarctica is today. As for food, on the other hand, people could turn to hydroponic agriculture. Well, this scenario, I'd say apocalyptic and maybe even Hollywood-like, would be destined to last forever unless by some incredible stroke of luck in a far-off future, our planet were to enter the orbit of another star. It would have to be at just the right distance from that star to allow temperatures to become comfortable and for life to flourish. But that would be a very utopian hope. Given the vastness of the cosmos, the odds would be infinitesimal, and in any case, the timeline would be unimaginably long. But if it were to happen, well, maybe new forms of intelligent life could walk the Earth again, maybe without knowing anything about what happened, right? About us. At most, they might be able to reconstruct the geological history, like we did, and identify our tiny presence in their distant past. Maybe they'll call Earth by a different name, who knows. Thank you so much for sticking with us until the end. I'll see you next time, always here on Geopop.